8.30 p.m. Good evening, I'm Oteli Edwards on News 5 tonight. 26 May, that's when Hogang residents will head to the polls if there's a contest on nomination day on the 16th. PM will have to decide, so as long as the call comes, we'll be ready for it. Meantime, Prime Minister Lee says national priorities should not be sidetracked and urges residents to vote wisely. The alleged underwear bomber plotting to blow up a plane turns out to be a double agent. And five suspects arrested for kidnapping a Dutch boy in Malaysia, but two others are still on the run. Voters in the vacant single-seat ward of Hogang will go to the polls on May 26 if there's a contest on nomination day on May 16th. President Tony Tan Keng Yam issued the writ of election for the constituency today. And you are looking at it right now. The seat was vacated in February by the former Workers' Party MP Yao Shin Leong. The Elections Department says Serangoon Junior College will be the nomination centre. The returning officer is the Chief Executive Director of the People's Association, Yam Ami. Election deposit for candidates has been set at $13,500, the same amount as the last general election. Now that a writ has been issued for a by-election in Hogang, what can we expect? Our reporter explains the lead-up to polling day. Based on the register of electors, there are about 24,000 voters in Hogang, a single-member seat located in the northeastern part of Singapore. The last general election was held in May 2011, three months after the Electoral Boundaries Review Committee report was released. So what happens now that the president has issued the writ of elections? Well, the returning officer will issue a notice stipulating the date, time and place for nomination of candidates. The nomination paper has to be signed by the candidate, proposer, seconder and at least four assenters. These names must appear on the register of electors for the constituency that the candidate is standing in. The candidate must also pay an election deposit amounting to about 8% of the total allowance payable to MPs. Now once that is sorted out, all eyes will be on nomination day. This has to take place at least four days and no more than one month after the writ is issued. Here's what will happen on nomination day. Candidates must present their nomination papers and certificates to the returning officer at the nomination centre between 11 a.m. and noon. Nomination closes at noon. If there is no contest, a walkover will be announced. There is an objection time during which candidates can object to any nomination. Now, this is done between 11 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. Objections could be on the grounds of the unsuitability of candidates or nomination papers not filed properly. Objection results, if any, will be announced by 1 p.m. Campaigning starts immediately after nomination closes, and it can run from just nine days to eight weeks. Campaigning could be in the form of house-to-house -house visits or rallies by the candidates. As with the 2011 general election, internet election advertising is allowed. This means candidates can leverage on new media tools to engage voters and spread their message. There'll also be a one-day cooling-off day before polling. That's when no campaigning is allowed. Introduced in April 2010, Singapore Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong had said the day will give voters time to reflect rationally on issues after the emotional high of election campaigning. Now, polling day takes place at least 10 days or at most 8 weeks after nomination day. And perhaps the question on the minds of many Singaporeans is, will there be a public holiday for the by-election? Well, the Parliamentary Elections Act says no, but employers must allow voters in Hogang time off to vote. The Hogang by-election is shaping up to be a straight fight between the People's Action Party and the Workers' Party. Three opposition parties, National Party, Party, Singapore Democratic Party and the Singapore People's Party have said that they will not contest the by-election. Mr Desmond Chu, who was the PAP candidate for Hogang during the general election last year, could be contesting this by election. Mr Chu currently serves as an advisor to the Hogang grassroots organisations after losing the election to the Workers' Party's Yao Shin Leung last year. But a year on, Mr Chu told reporters he felt a change in how residents regard him. That's because when I uh, participate in G11, I only have about uh, three months with them. Uh, now an additional year with them. Uh, spend a lot more time being uh, close, um, talking, making sure that um, we have a lot more interaction time. So definitely you see that residents are a lot warmer. 
um, they are more ready to talk to you about issues that matter to them. He said it is up to the Prime Minister to decide who will contest in Hogang, but added that he's ready. This evening, Workers' Party's Chen Shou Mao was at a Meet the People session in Hogang Avenue 5. Mr Chen, who is an MP for Aljunit GRC, said he was there to facilitate the weekly MPS in the single-seat ward. He declined to make any comments about the Hogang by-election, saying that the MPS was not the platform to do so. He said the party leadership will make the relevant statements in due course. In his first comments on the by-election, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Lung says it should not distract the country from focusing on national priorities and building an inclusive Singapore. Here's him at Melda Saad. Well, in his Facebook post, Mr Lee said that over the past year, the government has worked hard with Singaporeans to implement programs to build an inclusive Singapore. He said much work remains ahead to translate the policies into action. On the by-election... Lee said Mr. Yao himself has said nothing and that both the Workers' Party and Mr. Yao have let voters down. Certificates of entitlement premiums for vehicles closed mix in the latest round of bidding today. Earlier this month, Transport Minister Lui Tuck Yu had signaled that plans to cut the growth rate of vehicles may be delayed amid concerns over surging COE premiums caused by a supply crunch. Premiums in the large cars category saw the largest increase of some $1,000 to over 92000 The goods, vehicles and buses category closed higher at 858500 But the small cars category closed lower at 62600 The open category, which is mostly used for big cars, also went down to just under 89000 I think uh, the government uh, announcement on uh, a consideration for a reallocation is... Uh, very pertinent at this point in time so uh, people are more cautious people have to be uh, people have to wait to see what really happens foreign experts have raised concerns in the way last december's train disruptions were managed among them the lack of customer care and confusion of roles by smrt staff Two experts gave a total of 10 recommendations to the Committee of Inquiry today. Andrew Barr from the London Underground said the recommendations are fairly common sense and not rocket science. Mr Barr and Peter Gillens from Australia said that SMRT must have a simplified okay, system thanks. which easily allows staff to know specific roles yep. and responsibilities. They felt SMRT also fell short in caring for commuters, especially those stuck in stalled trains. Mr Barr shared how in London, nearby retail outlets are roped in to to make sure there are bottled water for commuters. The experts also suggested ferrying affected commuters to stations where trains are still operating on other lines. Well, the two experts also stressed the need to be honest and to give clear information to commuters in the event of a disruption. For example, if there are no bus bridging services as yet, this should be told to commuters so that they can make an informed decision on what to do next. Overall, the experts feel that given the resources, SMRT did all they could during the disruptions. More people are volunteering their services to the community. The People's Association says the number of grassroots leaders hit 32,000 last December, an increase of 16% compared to five years ago. More from the minority groups are also stepping up to the challenge, with a 12% increase in Malay grassroots leaders and 26% for Indians. The PA says the number of new citizens and PRs has also increased by about 10% in the past couple of years. It says this is an encouraging sign and puts Singapore on track to achieving its community 2015 vision. Many have to manage their time between their work, family, their other commitments. But I just touched that despite the challenges, many have also come forward because they believe that it is important to serve others in the community. Coming up on News 5, why the common curry dish may be able to keep cancer at bay. And a Ferrari stunt makes the wrong impression on China. Only mid... This is News 5 tonight. 
A tanker caught fire this afternoon along the Pan Island Expressway in the direction towards Jurong. The incident happened when the tanker was near the CTE exit around 3 p.m. Firefighters won the scene within minutes and quickly extinguished the blaze. Thankfully, no one was injured. Back to news on the Hogang Bai election. Our reporter Saiful Bari Ismail is at a Meet the People session at Hogang, which was attended by Workers' Party Chief Lao Tia Kiang. And he joins us live now on the phone. So Saiful, uh, what did Mr. Lao say? Well, Kelly, Mr. Lao Tia Kiang arrived at the uh, Hogang SNC Meet the People session at about uh, 9.20 just now. And uh, he was uh, there shaking hands with the residents and also uh, to speak with the media. And uh, the first question we asked him was, um, has he made up his mind on who he should feel uh, for the Hogang by-election come uh, nomination day? And he told the media that um, the Workers' Party has made a clear-cut decision on who the party will nominate um, uh, as candidate for the Hogang uh, by-election, uh, but he is not telling the media who that person is. Um, the Workers' Party Central Committee held a meeting um, earlier today uh, and there was a unanimous decision on who the, the, the party should field. Um, uh, Mr. What Mr. Lau can say at this point in time is that the Workers' Party will be ready to hold a, a news conference tomorrow at the party headquarters at 4 p.m. And, and he will make the official announcement then. But you know what? Um, together with Mr. Lau Kia Kiang, he arrived with Mr. Peng Eng Huat. Now, Mr. Peng, as you know, uh, has been seen walking the ground at Hogang for the last couple of months, uh, you know, meeting residents and so on. And if there's a sign of his uh, candidacy, you know, we, we, we only can see uh, until tomorrow. And uh, Mr. Peng, as you also might be aware that he was uh, the... Uh, nominate, uh, he was the candidate in the last election for the East Coast uh, GRC. Now, Mr. Lau also talked about the timing of, of this by-election, and he was uh, he said that he was a little bit surprised about the timing of this election, um, and he, he was the view or he's of the view that the PM was busy and and uh, and he may needed more time to, to consider this by-election. So he was a little bit surprised about the timing of the by-election. And we also asked him about the building of the, the new market uh, that the PAP is, uh, uh, Desmond Chu is proposing to build in Hogang. And now, Mr. Lau said that uh, the Workers' Party is not against in any form of development um, in the area, in the constituency, uh, but he said that, the mar- that even, the, even the new market uh, cannot bring back that old feeling uh, that residents uh, uh, had uh, with the old market, and the old market used to be the focal point for, for Hogang residents. And Mr. Lau also hopes that there will not be a three-corner fight um, because, as you know, any multi-corner fight will just uh, dilute the, the, the vote. And uh, he also said that the so far, you know, Workers' Party has done, um, has done uh, he's satisfied with what the Workers' Party has done so far in meeting the residents' need in the Meet the People session, and he said that, you know, what this by-election means for the residents is that they have proven that uh, the residents will not be shortchanged, um, that the Workers' Party will uh, allow them to vote for another uh, elected member of parliament. Back to you, Kelly. Right. Thanks very much, uh, Saiful, for all your updates. In world news, reports out of the U.S. say the would-be suicide bomber in the Al-Qaeda plot to blow up an airliner is in fact a double agent working for the CIA. He infiltrated Al-Qaeda's branch in Yemen, left the country with the explosive device and delivered it to U.S. officials. According to the Los Angeles Times, he managed to spend weeks with the Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. And he had the goal of convincing his handlers to allow him to carry out a suicide mission using a non-metallic device. A senior U.S. official told the Times that the bomb was sewn into custom-fit underwear and would have been difficult to detect even in a careful pat-down at an airport. FBI authorities are now examining the explosive. We're trying to understand uh, the uh, different uh, aspects of the design uh, to make sure that we're able to uh, take uh, preventive actions in the future to prevent this or other types of devices from uh, getting uh, into uh, areas that uh, could uh, threaten the American public. 
Passenger checks remain unchanged at U.S. airports. The U.S. has stressed that there is currently no credible or specific information about a terror threat to the country. Malaysian police have arrested five suspects in connection with the kidnapping of a Dutch boy two weeks ago. Two other suspects are said to have fled the country and police are seeking the help of Interpol to hunt them down. 12-year-old Nayati, who's half Dutch and half South African, was abducted outside his international school on April 27 in a high-end residential area near Kuala Lumpur. Now, within hours, concerns were pouring in from around the world via the social media, and a nationwide campaign was launched to help find Nayati. Despite the heightened publicity, the kidnappers demanded ransom using Nayati's Facebook account. Negotiations went on for four days before a sum was finally agreed upon. Nayati was released on the sixth day after his parents reportedly paid kidnappers about 100,000 US dollars. Speaking at a news conference, the police CID chief commented on this highly unusual kidnapping case. Ini adalah salah satu case deh. Karena dia tanpa mendapat publicity yang begitu meluas sekali. Dan it is not our protocol dalam uh, dalam segi sudut uh, kidnapping. Huh? We don't want to reveal too much on our trade craft. Because uh, it will trigger some more like, like, like that uh, dia punya apa ni? Modus operandi. The police have since picked up five suspects, including a woman from separate operations in Malaysia, and recovered half of the ransom money. The chief suspect, who is believed to have masterminded the kidnapping, is believed to have fled the country. Him and another accomplice, both age 23, are wanted by the police. Next, a new study hopes to prove that curry can potentially cure cancer. The sizzling sensation could be turmeric. The common spice contains cur- curcumin, which doctors hope could help treat those with advanced bowel cancer. Early tests show it has the power to zap tumors and slow down the disease. The research was inspired by studies which found that British Asians are less susceptible to bowel cancer. A two-year trial involving 40 patients is now underway. Car maker Ferrari has apologized for a publicity stunt in China that may have damaged a 600-year-old gate in Nanjing City. An online video shows a Ferrari performing what's called donuts on top of the city's Zhonghua Gate. The car had been hoisted atop the gate for the stunt, which left tire marks on the Ming Dynasty-era gate's ramparts. The city's preservation authorities say the car may have damaged the infrastructure of the gate itself. The stunt was part of an event marking Ferrari's 20th anniversary in China. The attraction was also closed to tourists for half a day. But officials insist that Ferrari didn't have appropriate approval to be there. Sports, still to come on five. He's got a knock him out. It's all big talk anyway. And he was banned for brawling. So why is Derek Chisora going up against boxer David Hay again? In business news, the Monetary Authority of Singapore says it will refine the list of excluded investment products. EIPs don't require investors to undergo the customer knowledge assessment. The list of EIPs will soon include some products listed on foreign exchanges, certain collective investment schemes and sub-funds of investment-linked life insurance policies. This will take effect in October. In earnings news, Singapore Airlines has posted a net loss of $38.2 million for the quarter ended March 31st. The loss was attributed to a rise in fuel costs. It was also lower than market expectations. For the quarter, fuel costs amounted to around $1.45 billion. Revenue for the quarter increased by 3.3% to $3.7 billion. And here are the market numbers.
In sport, Chelsea's boss Roberto Di Matteo has defended his team selection in yesterday's 1-4 loss to Liverpool at Anfield. Di Matteo had made eight changes to the team that beat Liverpool in the FA Cup final over the weekend. The result means Chelsea will finish sixth in a premiership, their lowest position in over 10 years. It also means that the Blues must win this month's Champions League final if they are to play in next season's Premier Tournament. Members of First Eleven, Singapore's first reality TV show on football, are getting the real deal and heading to Real Madrid in September. The players will be in Spain for a four-day training trip, which may see them meeting stars like Cristiano Ronaldo. The Singapore team will train with the Madrid coaches and even play a match with one of the teams. British boxing heavyweights David Hay and Derek Chisora are going to settle their differences in the ring. You may remember the two getting involved in a brawl at a post-fight press conference following Chisora's defeat by Vitaly Klitschko in Munich last February. And the bad blood is still boiling between the two. People just kept coming up to me. People who weren't boxing fans, regular people on the streets, saying, like, Derek, he's an idiot, you've got to knock him out. They're beginning with all the big talk, all the big talk, you know, get in the ring, you don't deliver. And get knocked out again, eh? Yeah. We've done, we played that game before and you lost. Do you remember? Yeah, 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 you lost. You was on the floor. Yeah, the two continued to trade insults at a heated news conference to officially announce the fight. It's going to be fought at Upton Park in London, but it's not even going to be licensed by the British Boxing Board of Control. That's because Chisora had his license suspended indefinitely after he was cited for three counts of indiscipline as a result of the incident. Hay, on the other hand, has officially retired from the sport. Instead, it will be controlled by the Luxembourg Boxing Association, who will supply all the necessary officials and be responsible for the event. And that's News 5 tonight. Good night.